All right. If you listen long enough to our guest today, you'll actually hear his resume get longer. Um, he's a wrestler, an actor, businessman, producer, comic book star, talk show host. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome uh, Mr. Chavo Guerrero Jr. Chavo, thanks so much for taking time out of your no doubt busy schedule to sit down and talk with us. Uh, how, how are you doing today? Hey, man, I'm doing really good, man. Thanks. I'm actually just getting done with the gym, walking out, so if you hear some weights clanking, you'll know exactly what that is. <laughs> Great. Now, uh, Ch- Chavo, you know, we follow you on Instagram, uh, at Chavo Guerrero Jr., and we see that something big is happening on November 16th. Can you give us some hints, maybe, as to, to what's happening on that day? Yeah, man. So, on November 16th, uh, me and Ray Mysterio are launching a clothing line called VLR Clothing, Viva La Rasta Clothing. And basically, it's just, uh, we're launching a really, really nice, uh, just a cool, cool brand is basically what we're launching, you know. What's so it out there for the Latinos a lot of times, and it's, it's a brand that appeals to everybody, but anything that's got less, sometimes that Latino uh, backs behind, you know, that, that culture behind it, sometimes it's gang or skulls or that kind of stuff. And there's really nothing really just nice, like a great brand, like a, a la Quicksilver or a Luca or mm-hmm. something like that. And that's what we're basically what we're launching. And and we're taking off the model of like uh, FUBU, which was like for us, by us. Mm-hmm. And it was by, you know, Damon and uh, like an urban culture. Well, basically, that's what we're doing with VLR. And that's, it's made really by me and Ray. And, and it's, <laughs> it's for Latinos, by Latinos, man. Awesome. And, it's, and like I said, it, it appeals, appeals to everybody. It's just a really cool looking brand. Awesome. Now, uh, we got we can't have Chavo Guerrero Jr. on here and not talk Lucha Underground. Um, if you're not familiar with it, it's an amazing hybrid of uh, wrestling and entertainment. Uh, season one just finished. Do you have any favorite moments from that season that you can tell us? Yeah, for, for me, it was uh, becoming the new chairman a la La Parca from WCW, the chairman <laughs> of Lucha Underground and hitting everybody, man. That was great. And uh, we really showed the tone of that show. You know, remember, this is our first season, and we really didn't know where and where we're going to go with it, and kind of like how good it was going to be. We, I, you, I, I saw the potential, but I really didn't know how it was going to be. And then after that second episode, where I just smacked um, uh, Sexy Star with a chair, everybody was like, "What the heck? You you can't do that!" I mean, even Vince Russo, if you remember Vince Russo. He was like, oh, my God, that's what I knew, that this was different right then and there. He goes, I was trying to do that in WCW, and they wouldn't allow me to do anything with the girls. We couldn't even touch them. He goes, when you hit Sexy Fell in the chair, he goes, the, the world wrestling world changed. <laughs> I started laughing. Like, wow, I didn't, I didn't see it that big, but, hey, it's coming to his mouth. I was like, all right, great. Now, obviously, uh, it had a pretty good following, Lucha Underground. A lot of people, a lot of eyes on it and talking about it. So, um is is season two uh, uh, for sure thing? Is it is it going to happen? Yeah, we start taping on Saturday, actually the the fifteenth. So, so it's, is there? It's a go. It's a hundred percent. And the only reason it took so long is that people didn't, like I said, didn't realize that this was going to take off the way it did. So right away, when it did, I mean, they El Ray ordered forty episodes right away, right away. But we were trying. We have a very high production value, as you can see, and we we're really just trying to keep it. We couldn't, we couldn't come back in the second season and have it not be as good as the first. It had to yeah. be a great, a great sequel, like a la Terminator 2, as opposed to the first Terminator, which is a great movie. But you couldn't come back with a junky Terminator. It had to be even better. And that's, you know, when they just really, you know, they came, they came live with that one, you know? And that's what, now, that's what we had to be. We, ha- we have to have a great stellar season because now eyes are watching us. And before, people didn't know what to expect. Now they all know what to expect. Definitely. Well... It's a it's a great show, and you know the El Rey Network, like you mentioned. But um, I I think that you've got an amazing group that's on there right now. But in season two, do you think that we'll see any new additions, maybe to the roster? Absolutely, absolutely. We have some a bunch of surprises in store, and uh, you know, like anything in wrestling, things change all the time. Constantly, people getting hurt, people getting added. You know, contracts are signing, all different stuff, and and this is really no different. And, uh, we just had some really good surprises and I kind of can't, I can't hint yet, but it's going to be a really big season. 
Awesome, awesome. Now, Chavo, uh, you know, uh, were you surprised by the outpouring of positivity towards uh, Lucha Underground? Because, you know, you know, coming into the world of pro wrestling as a new company, as a new brand, you know, nobody ever knows what to expect. But, I mean, the fans out there just love it. You know what? I wasn't surprised at all. When I saw the product, it was, it was, it was great. That's after the first, usually in wrestling, the production's trying to catch up with the wrestlers because we're just, wrestlers are really, really good. It was, it was opposite here. The, the production was so good. After the, I saw the first episode, I went and told the wrestlers aside, the guys, we really need to step up our game, you know? So I wasn't surprised at all because I just knew how good it was. And wrestling fans, it's not, it's not hard. People make it rocket science, but it, it's not. All you have to do is treat the wrestling fan with respect and give them a good product. Don't insult their intelligence. And that's what wrestling does a lot of times. Wrestling will say, oh, we're just going to, we got some writers in here that don't really know wrestling. They're just Hollywood writers. So they just start writing. And we, as wrestlers, are constantly going, no, that can't work. Because, look, I, I hit Ray Mysterio with a chair and broke his leg six months ago. Oh, they, no one will remember that. I don't know. Yes, they will. <laughs> yeah. The wrestling fans, they're so die hard, and you can't treat them like that. So in this show, when I saw that we were not treating them like that, we were making everything make sense and really putting out a great product that I knew it was going to be a hit. And, and if you see, if you read the comments on the, after the first episode, people are like, hmm, I like it, just different. I'm not sure yet. By the third episode, everybody was on board. Everybody was like, oh, my God, this is incredible. Just, just the production value and, and them, it's like a movie, basically. They're watching wrestling in a movie. Well, you, you mentioned how different uh, Lucha Underground is with, uh, with professional wrestling in general, but you also do something different in the fact that you guys have uh, almost seasons of, of wrestling. Um, this kind of helps people to be able to have a break and you know pursue a lot of other things like what you're doing right now. Do you like that idea of having seasons? Do you think that should be implemented kind of across the board? Well, I, I like the idea, first of all, because it was different. Second of all, it's very hard to write for 52 weeks a year, year in and year out. It's very hard. And if you see, you know, all in WWE, they're really having a hard time stealing three hours on a Monday night and having it really good for every year, you know, week in and week out. Now, there are weeks that's that, you know, hey, great shows. But there's a lot of weeks that it's, you, know, you don't even get to see the first action until 25 minutes in. You know, so, so uh, yeah, that's, that's a difficult. So I, I'm all about having seasons and, um, you know, giving a break and, 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 and having a TV show, which a lot of times wrestling is like, I'll, I'll keep saying WWE just because that, that, that's, that's a Coca-Cola of wrestling. They are, um, it, it, it's, uh, they pretend they're a TV show, but really it's a live event show is what they are. That TV show really just sells the live event and the pit views and the network. That's what that TV show is supposed to be. And, and instead of trying to upsell you or to the live, come watch our live event. Well, we don't have live events. We don't have pay-per-views. We don't have a network, a wrestling network. So basically, we're just going, just watch next week, watch next week, and we're actually treating it like a TV show with a cliffhanger at the end, a season finale, and, and coming back, you know, with the first, the, the first bang episode of the season, you know? Mm-hmm. Now, uh, you, not only are you wrestling for Lucha Underground, but you're, you're also a producer. Uh, do you enjoy that side of the business, and uh, how do you balance producing and wrestling? Yeah, you know, I def- I really, really enjoy it. And just being around wrestling, that wrestling being in our family for 75 years, and not just that, you know, me being at WCW and WWE and, and TNA, that we've just learned, I've learned so much being around it, and really just, really, in, in WWE was my, my, college. I was like going to Harvard of wrestling, you know, I really just watching how these things are done and participating and now being able to actually put to use all this stuff that I've learned, man, it, it's, it's awesome. It's great. And what's cool is that I'm teaching some of these new underground guys that have never really done wrestling. I'm teaching them a little bit of wrestling. Well, they're teaching me a huge bit of, of TV production. You know, I'm in the, the control room and helping directing and camera work and, and you name it basically. Now we the, we mentioned earlier that you're um, you've got your own show. You're a talk show host as well. Uh, can you tell people that haven't heard about this uh, about the Chavo Guerrero show? Yeah, you know what? That's a, that's a show that's on Geek Nation, and uh, hopefully we'll be filming some new episodes here pretty soon. 
but basically it's just me. Uh, it, it's just, uh, it's just a, like a mad man show. It's just a fun show. It's not me interviewing and asking like, uh, for instance, Lampe Jackson was on the show and it's not me asking him the MMA fighter, you know, and it's not me asking him, Hey, uh, when did you start your, your, um, your MMA career? You know, Hey, how did you start training? Cause he said that he's told that story, you know, a hundred times. Basically it's me asking, Hey, What's the first time you got your butt kicked, you know, in in, in, high, in school? What's the first car that you uh, you know lost your you know you had sex in? That kind of stuff. That, that basically, we're actually just you know, you know, just talking and, and just having having fun and, and uh, just having fun with it. You know what I mean? And more more like two two or three guys just like you know sitting around and having beers basically. And we actually have beers on, on set, so. It's cool. You got a bartender and everything. It's pretty cool. <laughs> That's great. Uh, now you know. There's also talk about you having your own comic book. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Yes. Yeah, so that one is being done right now, and that's uh, with uh, uh, Lion Forge Comics, and that's called The Warrior's Creed. It's basically a story of the Guerreros and kind of you know embellished a little bit, but how we uh, have kind of kept with many wrestlers and have these kind of little superpowers and. We've uh, protected this city in Mexico from this mafia syndicate, and it's kind of how it, it's just pretty cool. Um, it, it's just a great spin, and it's written by um, the same person who wrote the De- who wrote Deadpool. We actually make a movie about it right now. I think Fabian Nasiza, and he's like the number you know top five writer. He he wrote my my story, and then um, uh, Eddie Nuno Nunez, who's uh, a like a top ten graphic artist, you know, comic book artist, he's, he did the, the artistry on it, so it's, it's really cool. The Ryan Forge invested a lot of money into it, and I've read about eight episodes, eight books already, and they're, it's really compelling. I love it. Awesome. Now, uh, does, uh, do you yourself have uh, any favorite comic books out there? Yeah, I'm old school, man. I'm a, I'm a you know, Spider-Man, Marvel, uh, Marvel kind of guy, you know, so I love those Hulk and Superman, that kind of stuff, you know, although there are a lot of great new ones out there. Man, I'm just a, a, an old school guy for sure. All right. Now, uh, we we talked about it earlier, but uh, there's no getting around it. You are a member of the world famous Guerrero family. Um, we, we've had Ted DiBiase on here. We've had other wrestlers that come from famous wrestling families. So, where do you personally rank the Guerreros against all those other wrestling families? Well, um, you know, I'm biased, of course. But uh, God, you know, not taking away from any other wrestling family out there because we're all brothers in this business. You know, mm-hmm. we've all been up and down the road together, and you know, blood, sweat, and tears together for sure. Uh, but I think our family, we're really the only ones that um, have kind of we've made it everywhere we've gone. Whether it be Mexico, we've you know conquered Mexico, the U.S., Japan, uh, Europe, everywhere we've gone, we kind of. Um, we survived, and and basically, I would say this, we've been small brown guys in a big white guy's world, you know. <laughs> and we and we've uh, you know we're the only ones I think that can have great matches with anybody. We, we can brawl with you, we can rush technically wrestle with you, we can fly with you, we can um, we can kind of do it all in the wrestling world, you know, for sure. And that's I, I think that's something different than um, you know a lot of other families that. Where they're they're very good at one or two things, when we're kind of very good at all things. And again, not taking away from any of them because, you know, just being in this business for for any amount of time is, is a feat. Sure. Uh, and, you know, being from such a storied family and wrestling legacy, do you think being in the business was easier or harder for you? Uh, both, man. Both, to be honest. You know, we got the doors open for us easier. But as soon as you step through that door, there was no learning process. You really had to be good right off the bat because they're comparing you to your, you know, to your, your elders, you know, right off the bat. It wasn't like the first time you saw um, Shawn Michaels, for instance, you know, where he was just on Shawn Michaels. He was, he was like, him. he was, you know, he was always good and always, always um, a talented athlete. He got very, very good as he got older, you know. But us, as we came in, we were expected to be good right off the bat. There was no learning process, you know. So, sure. this business—if you know anything about this business—it really takes many, many years to to, uh, to master it, and um, you're constantly learning, and constantly changing. Even now, 20 years in, I'm still constantly changing. Now, this is a uh, we 
you know, this week is marks the 18th anniversary of the infamous Montreal screw job. Um, that oh, was yeah. all the way back in 1997. Uh, what do you remember about that moment of uh, wrestling history? I remember that it really shocked the wrestling world. You know, we were like, wow, but it really got screwed. Wow, you know, it's crazy. You know, so just, you know, now I'm being older, I see both sides of it. I see Brett's side, I see Vince's side of it, you know. Um, you know, Vince is trying to protect the company and Brett's protecting himself. You know, I, I, I get it. I, I totally get it. So um, that's, that's just a tough one, man. But I just remember, I remember really when it happened and we were just like, as a wrestler, we're all going to band against the promoters, you know what I mean, for sure, and, and stick together, or at least, you know, on paper, stick together. And, um, you know, it was, it was something that we were just like, gosh, we couldn't believe that it rocked the wrestling world. It really did. Sure. All right. Now, uh, Chavo, uh, we come to the part of a show we call the lightning round. We have some fun questions. Uh, you know, for feel free to give uh, the best response you, you want, a short answer or whatnot. Um, and uh, there's a few of those. We'll get into it, okay? Great. All right. So uh, who do you consider the most famous Mexican wrestler of all time? Um, that, that's tough. That's a, that's a, I'd have to say... Either Eddie Guerrero or Rey Mysterio or Emil Moscos. Okay. All right. Now, yeah. uh, now, have you ever heard of the band The Mountain Goats? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So they obviously have some uh, several songs about your your father Chavo classic. Uh, what sure. did they did they come talk to you about this or did they? I mean, because they're obviously big fans. I just didn't know what they had, uh, if you'd ever talked to wrestling with them. Yeah, you know what? Actually, when they came out with the song, Legend of Chavo Guerrero, which is about my father, which mentions me a little bit in it, um, you know, I, I contacted them on Twitter, and we became friends, and they explained to me that, that they used to go watch wrestling at the Olympic Auditorium, and, and my dad was a hero. So I was like, man, my too. <laughs> my hero, too. <laughs> So and they, that's basically where that that um, came from, you know, from all these years ago. They still made an in, my dad just made an impact on them. They wrote a song about them. All right. Now uh, to go a little political, uh, what are your thoughts on the possibility of having Donald Trump as the president of the United States? Uh-huh. Comical, to be honest. That's <laughs> very very comical. I've never seen anybody as racist as him get away with it. So in in the WWE, you got rid of. Um, um, Hulk Hogan for a racist comment, but yet Donald Trump is still in your your uh, Hall of Fame, and he's just saying all racist comments for sure. You know, and I get what they're saying. People people don't really care if you're here legally or illegally, as long as you pay your taxes, and that's basically what it boils down to. It doesn't. They're not. This country was founded on immigration. Every one of us, unless you're a Native American, every one of us origins came from a different land. Period, mm-hmm. and it was all illegal. Mm-hmm. As long as they're paying their taxes, and they figure out a way to get them to pay taxes. Well, then there you go. That's what it's all about. It's all comes down to money. All right. Now uh, we mentioned you have your own uh, talk show, the Chavo Guerrero Show. Who would yep. your your dream guest be for that show? My dream guest, you know, would be somebody who. Uh, that's a good one. It, it has to be somebody like, um, you know, famous actor or athlete that I like to go have a, a beer with afterwards and, you know, just uh, hang out with. And I, maybe I have to say uh, Charlie Sheen. Okay. <laughs> That'd be pretty awesome. Right. Charlie Sheen would be awesome. I think I go to parties that dude. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, now, are there any free agents out there that you would love to see in Lucha Underground? Uh Free agents. Yeah, you know, it, we have a little bit of a different style because we definitely have to do the reach style, you know, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's some free agents out there that that are that would uh, we'd like to see a little, you know, uh, off Aries and AJ Styles. Um, well, it's funny right now because right now is a very good good to be an independent wrestler in the wrestling world. When three or four years ago it wasn't. You know, a lot of these guys that we have in the underground tried out for the WWE and they turned them all down. And now. WWE is really, it's like we're all, everybody's scouting everywhere. We're scouting PWG shows, we're scouting Mexico, we're scouting Japan for these, you know, great indie wrestlers that have been around the world kind of and just have never had that big shot, you know. And uh, right now is a great time for indie wrestling. 
Absolutely. Now, uh, we know you're busy, so this is going to be like the end of our lightning round, but uh, let's just say that there's a situation out there. Um, what would you do? Would you A, lie, B, cheat, uh, C, steal, or D, all of the above? I would cheat to steal and then lie about it. <laughs> so your answer would be D, all of the above. <laughs> Perfect. Well, uh, Chavo Guerrero Jr., we thank you so much for your time. Uh, where can the fans keep up with you th- Keep up with you these days? You know, the world is full of uh, social media, pretty much. Where can the fans follow you? Follow me on Twitter at NextWarrior. Follow me on Instagram at Chavo Guerrero Jr. And on Facebook, I'm Real Chavo Guerrero Jr. Uh, and if you log on uh, on the 16th, sorry, on the 16th, uh, to viva, VLR.com, you will uh, be able to order T-shirts and hats from VLR, and we're offering them at a, uh, a, for a 21-day flash sale for $21, and they uh, can include shipping. So a T-shirt or a hat for 21 bucks to ship to your house, and after the 21 days, we will discontinue these, these actual designs and never have them again. Awesome. So basically, it's kind of like just for our hardcore fans. Definitely. Well, I know me and Jonathan will be all over that. Uh, Chavo, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. I know we barely scraped the surface with you today, and we would love to have you on uh, on a future show down the line. Thank you so much for your time. Absolutely, guys. Thanks a lot. God bless you guys, and uh, uh, viva la raza. Oh.